Okay, so if you remember, there were two key words when it came to counting. There was the keyword OR and the keyword AND. And the same keywords, of course, apply when dealing with probabilities. So we could ask, assume that we have a sample space S and two events, A and B. You could ask for the probability of A occurring or B occurring. And of course, OR means union. So you would simply write P, A, union B. Asking for the probability of A occurring or B occurring or both. The second keyword is AND. So the probability of A occurring AND simultaneously B occurring. And this is simply the intersection between A and B. And there is a simple but important remark that can be made about the intersection. And that is how this can be simplified when the events A and B are independent. Now the word really stands for what it means. Events A and B are independent if the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. So it's really intuitive. So here's the possible simplification of P of A intersects B if A and B are independent. So if the events A and B are independent, then the probability of A intersects B of A and B boils down to the probability of A times the probability of B. And that's it. So whenever you have two independent events and you ask for the probability of A and B, it's just probability of A times probability of B. And of course, this is true if you had multiple events. You could have three independent events and then if you had P of A intersects B intersects C, it would just be P of A times P of B times P of C. So when you have a sequence of independent events, you can simply multiply individual probabilities for each given event. So let's consider a simple example where we'll solve the problem first using straightforward counting problem technique using the, of course, equiprobability theorem, and then we'll view the problem no longer as a direct counting problem, but as a sequence of independent events. So consider our experiment. Quite simply, suppose we flip a coin, and we'll assume that the coin is fair. So we flip a coin five times. So the assumption here is that we keep track of the order of the results. So first flip was it heads or tails, second flip was it heads or tails, and so forth until up to the fifth flip. So let's try and visualize what we have. We have the result of the first flip, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth. And for each flip, there are two possible outcomes, either heads or tails. Every flip will result in heads or tails. So there are two options for the first flip, and two for the second, and two for the third, and two for the fourth, and two for the fifth. So if you ask, well, how many possible outcomes are there in our sample space? Total number, of course, S contains all possible outcomes. And our outcomes here are five tuples either heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, anything like this where every outcome is either heads or tails. Well, there are two options for the first flip and, of course, when we say and, we multiply and two for the second and two for the third and two for the fourth and two for the fifth, which gives us two to the five total number of possible outcomes, which of course is 32. And you can see why I'm not gonna write every possible outcome explicitly. There are 32 of them. That's too many. But that's the size of our sample space. There are in total 
32 different outcomes for our experiment. And now let's ask a simple question. What is the probability of obtaining all heads? So every single flip is heads. So we'll call this event E. So this is the event obtaining heads five times. But because we're only flipping the coin five times, this means that every single flip results in heads. Well, if you think of it, this is quite a simple event. There are only one way of obtaining heads five times, as there are only five flips. Heads the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. This is the only outcome that results in heads every flip. So, the size of our event of interest, being that we flip heads every time, contains a single outcome. So the size is 1. And now because we assume that the coin was fair, we can use the equiprobability theorem. The probability of event E, therefore of obtaining heads every flip for each of our five flips, is going to be 1 out of 32 using the equi probability theorem. So very straightforward problem. Now let's look at it no longer as a counting problem in the sense of the equi probability theorem, but let's think of it as a sequence of independent events, right? We have five consecutive flips and each flip is independent from the other flips. No matter what happens the first flip will not affect the result of the second flip. Same for the second and third and so forth. So what we have is a sequence of five independent events and the events being of course the flips. So now this is our second solution. So we're asking P of E and now we're going to think of E, as we've just said, as a sequence of five independent events. Well, it means that, and here I'll use a shorthand notation, to have every flip being heads mean that the first flip must be heads. So I'll call this H1. The first flip results in heads and intersection. The second flip must result in heads. I'll call this H2 and intersection, the third flip must result in heads, H3, and intersection, the fourth flip must also result in heads, and finally, intersection, the fifth flip must result in heads. Viewing the event E as a sequence of five independent events. But, as the events are independent, we can of course use this observation. When you have an intersection of independent events, no matter how many, you can simply multiply individual probabilities. So this is P of H1 times P of H2 times P of H3 times P of H4 times P of H5. But if you think of it, all these probabilities are the same. We are asking on any given flip what is the probability of obtaining heads? Well, it's 1 out of 2. So we have 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. But 1 times 1 times 1 5 times is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 5 times is 2 to the 5. Which of course gives you 1 out of 32 same answer that was obtained using the equiprobability theorem. So a very simple example, but just to show you that you can think sometimes of a, an example of a problem in two different ways. Straightforward counting problem using the equiprobability theorem, or thinking now of the event as a sequence of independent events that can be broken down 
into much simpler events and because of independence we can multiply the individual probabilities and arrive of course at the same answer. Let's do one last little problem within this one just to again show a nice example of the complement rule. What if we asked for the probability of obtaining let's say tails at least once. So here the event E I'll use a different name, I'll call it A. So our event here is out of the five flips we obtain tails at least once. So I'll simply write at least So we obtain at least one tails. Now if you think of it, you're flipping this coin five times. So think of the total number of different ways that you can obtain tails. You could obtain tails zero times, or one time, or two times, or three times, or four times, or five times. So saying you will obtain tails at least one time means exactly one or exactly 2, or exactly 3, or exactly 4, or exactly 5. Well, that's a lot of work. You have to count each of these separately. So right away you think, well look, what's left over is so simple that we can use naturally the complement rule. So P of A is what we want. After flipping the coin five times, the event of obtaining tails at least once. Well we use here the complement rule, so it's 1 minus P of A complement. But A complement is obtaining tails zero times. But if you think of it, if you obtain tails zero times it means that every flip is heads. Aha! So A complement, never obtaining tails, is always obtaining heads, which is event E. All we have is 1 minus P of E, and we know what P of E is. It's 1 out of 32. So all we're left with is 1 minus 1 out of 32. 1 is 32 out of 32, minus 1 gives you 31 out of 32, and that's it. So a very nice little problem that would have been very painful directly, but very slick solution using the complement rule. So always keep in mind when the event seems rather overly complicated, usually the complement will give you a much slicker solution. And that's it.